All right, when you tell people not to do something, they usually are tempted to do it. Uh, that's been the case with e-cigarettes, uh, e uh, the flavored ones. Since the federal government started cracking down on them a few years ago, sales have really boomed. News Nation business analyst and New York Post reporter Lydia Moynihan. Lydia, you know, I did stories on this years ago on how uh, these companies, these massive companies, were actually targeting kids because of the flavors, the fun flavors of these e-cigarettes. Uh, the federal government steps in, says, okay, we're going to handle this, but it turns out more people just went and got them. It's, it's pretty amazing how psychology works, right? Yeah, so those uh, sales have actually soared 47% Whoa. over just the last two years alone. And of course, as you mentioned, the way this was framed was that it was going to help adults ease off cigarettes. This was better for adults than just smoking whatever is in a cigarette. But of course, that's not the reality of all about what happened. Instead, kids started using these products as well. And the issue with the regulations, people felt like at the very least, the FDA was not very smart about the way they handled this because they banned in 2020 these reusable cartridges. So that really targeted Juul, some of these big corporations that were creating these e-cigs. And at the time, disposable e-cigs represented about 15% of the market. So the FDA thought, oh, we got this, we got this covered. And unfortunately, uh, you know, these larger companies failed, but in their wake, all of these other companies emerged, cropped up, and started selling these not reusable SIGs. And the other piece here that's very concerning, experts are trying to raise alarm bells on, is that the amount of nicotine yeah, hello. that are in these e-SIGs has just skyrocketed 76% over the last five years. So I, I think it's a kids joke. Even using this for a couple days can get addicted. I think so it's a it joke. It is very concerning. It's stupid because the fact is, is they, they were first marketed, like you said, as kind of the gateway to weaning yourself off of traditional cigarettes when they're just as dangerous as cigarettes. Don't even get me started on the hookah lounges. Okay, that's another stop topic. Uh, let's talk about... <laughs> I love that face, girl. What, what, uh, what about the hookah lounges? We will I actually, don't, I want to hear what you were going to say. No, we'll talk later off, offline, <laughs> offline in the air. Um, let's talk about how inflation is affecting charities uh, in the way of donations. Are people less generous or are they just distracted by inflation? It's a good question. So inflation, I think, is a key element here. People feel like they can't even put food on their own family's table. They can't think about actually supporting other people as well. So um, if you look at year over year, people donated about 3% less. But when you factor in inflation, charities got about 10% less year over year. Um, this is actually the lowest rate of giving we've seen since 1995. Um, I was reading some up on this as well, that some people feel the government and big philanthropies are sort of stepping in and can do a lot more than they can with just their pocket change. But certainly an interesting change of behavior. And hopefully, as inflation eases, people will feel more encouraged to start giving. But um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Well, hopefully, people will realize that you don't have to just give money. You can give time. You can volunteer. You that's can give what's in your such closet. such a good point. And that's not captured in mm -hmm. these surveys. Yeah. yeah. Important. Lydia, thank you. Have a great weekend, girl. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.